Hello YouTube, El Mossy Show up here and I have for you guys today a uh, UU replay that I had saved up for about a week and it was actually a really really good battle but before I get into the video I just want to go ahead and apologize for not uploading uh, Sunday and I know it shouldn't be a big deal but to me it is just because uh, recording and uploading is is one of the handful of things that I really do enjoy and that makes me happy and I, to know that I couldn't upload a video for you guys on Sunday really really bothered me not to mention that I've already uploaded 52 videos in a row so the streak broke but uh, this weekend on my job has been very hectic because it's Super Bowl weekend so working at a hot wing restaurant is not exactly the ideal job to have at that current moment and just yeah I, I apologize for not being able to upload for you guys yesterday and uh, hopefully you understand especially because the past few videos have been doing so well I hope things won't kind of die down because of me missing that one day and to be honest with you guys a Saturday night I actually went to sleep very very mad because I couldn't record for you guys on Sunday and just yeah I'm, I'm sorry again I know this shouldn't be a big deal but as I said I really really do enjoy uploading for you guys and I enjoy playing this game and as I said, it's one of the few things that makes me happy and that I truly enjoy. So, uh, thanks to you guys who do watch my videos. I know this is just supposed to be a regular video, but just, just thank you for everybody who does watch my videos. Anyways, I, I'm done with the lovey dovey stuff. I don't want this to be made into more sentimental than, I, than it is already. And just, yeah, anyways, anyways, you guys are here for a battle. My bad, my bad. Of course, if you do enjoy the video, Make sure to hit the like button down below guys, one like can definitely go a long way. So look at a team preview, uh, this team that I made was, uh, the original version of this team was given to me by my boy uh, DMT, but I changed some things around, I threw in a Hydreigon and a Starmie, and um, a, a Chestnut I think, because I don't know, I forget the original team, but I didn't like the original version, so I changed it up to more to my liking. So looking at my opponent's team, uh, going into this battle, uh, Superior and Machamp were the two biggest things I saw being a threat because even though yes I do have a Bussy, I don't have any offensive move which means if this Superior has a sub and it gets up behind a substitute it will definitely put in some work to my team so I really have to prevent that. Uh, close, not close combat, sorry, but a Choice Band-Aid Machamp can definitely put in some work to my team especially because this is offensive Starmie as opposed to defensive Starmie so that's something that I really have to watch out for. Also, a Crobat is a giant, giant pain to this team because it literally outspeeds everything on my team bar a Scarf Hydreigon. So, Crobat isn't exactly a threat, but it is just a giant nuisance to my team. So yeah, with that being said, uh, let's get into the battle. So he's going to be leading off with a Crobat, of course, as I'm going to be leading off with my Hydreigon. Now, I am Scarf Hydreigon, so what I'm going to do is actually make a rather aggressive play and go straight for the Draco Meteor because 9 times out of 10 when I lead off with my Hydreigon and my opponent leads off with the Crobat they normally stay in and go for U-Turn which uh, at times I question especially because he does have a Porygon too then again some Hydreigon do tend to carry superpowers so I guess his best play was just to stay in to go for U-Turn uh, because if he outsped me then he could just bring in the Porygon knowing I wouldn't go for Superpower, but because I'm scarfed, I will be able to outspeed him. And if he is offensive, I should be able to Oko him. But because he did live this hit, I know that he's just a standard defensive Crobat, max HP, uh, near max speed, and the rest in attack. As he brings in the mod champ, I'm gonna switch right into my chestnut because it's the best thing that I have to switch into this mod champ, hoping that he wouldn't go for the dynamic punch. As luckily, he ends up just going for knockoff, predicting me to most likely bring in my Starmie, considering that I really had no reason not to. But, as I said, this is offensive Starmie, not the uh, bulky rapid twin Starmie, so my Chestnut is the best switch into this mod champ, which means if I lose Chestnut, then mod champ is going to run a, a rampage on my team. So, he ends up going for the knockoff, knocked off my Rocky Helmet, I was experimenting with items between Leftovers and Rocky Helmet on Chestnut at this point, and then I'm going to go for the Leech Seed to him to actually bring in the Acrobat, in hindsight, I could have definitely double switched into my Hydreigon, but I really didn't want to risk him staying in and going for a dynamic punch because ultimately Hydreigon is going to be a major help to me in this battle especially once I get rid of his Porygon too because I can just come in, I outspeed his entire team unless he has Scarfed uh, Raikou or he's bad like me and has Scarfed Superior <laughs> uh, if you guys missed that showdown session then 
you won't get what I'm trying to say. So ultimately staying in and just going straight for Elite Seed was my better play because even if I did go for a Lair of Spikes, it really wouldn't have benefited me just because Crobat could have easily taken any move that I wanted to go for and just defog. So ultimately going for Lee was definitely my better play in my opinion as this time I'm going to predict him to go for the Roost and I'm going to go for a Lair of Spikes. I know that may seem odd, but the reason why I went for that Lair of Spikes is because I wanted to put him in a situation where he would be forced to go for defog and then I could get a free switch into my Mega Swampert and a Mega Evolve, but he actually ends up going for the Roost and not the defog, which is actually good for me because this turn I'm going to stay in predicting him to go for the defog and because I'm adamant max attack mega swampert I'm gonna get off a huge chunk of damage however though because he does have a black sludge he's gonna be able to live after the elite seed health that I got back as he brings in the Porygon too I did expect him to want to switch out or either go for the Russo so Earthquaking was ultimately my better play in that scenario as this turn I make a bit of a questionable play I was actually very very close to going for the ice punch predicting him to want to bring in superior but Ultimately, I decided that getting rid of this Porygon 2 would be more beneficial to me in the long run of this battle because as I mentioned, once I get rid of it, I should be able to bring in Hydreigon, I click Draco Meteor and I should get a kill every time unless he has like specially defensive Swampert. Uh, then again, this could be a Solvest Machamp, but with it being at 83%, I think I should be able to 2KO it after the minus 2 from Draco Meteor anyways. So I wanted to go for the Waterfall to hopefully try and get a flinch on this Porygon 2 to prevent him from being able to recover but he actually ends up going for the toxic i'm guessing he thought i would switch out which is the only uh logical thing i can think of why he would do that uh ultimately he should have just gone for the recover that definitely would have been his better play to do and would have put me in a bit of a bad scenario uh then again i do have toxic on blissey so i guess i could have brought that in and poisoned it so i don't know i guess it wasn't too bad he went for toxic but i think his better play would have been to go for the recover anyways he's gonna switch into a swampert here as i just go for another waterfall i do a pretty solid amount of damage to this swampert however though with me being toxic he is going to be able to beat me one on one so i'm going to go ahead and switch into my starmie expecting him to want to go for the stealth rocks as he ends up making an aggressive play by going for the scald and here i'm going to stay and go for the psychic thinking okay he's going to be fearing me uh, being able to knock him out so he's probably going to switch out into his uh, Porygon 2 as death fodder so I can get rid of that but he ends up staying in and I'm able to get off a, a solid chunk of damage although in return he brings me down to the point where I only have two life orb hits I do carry recover on the Starmie but seeing as that did 61% it's not exactly the best thing for me to go for the recover in this scenario because he will be able to knock me out. As I go for another psychic, I am analytic, so I do a huge, huge amount of damage to this Raikou. An easy 68%. Well, it says 68 here, but it says I did 67 right on the replay. I know my math numbers, okay? Don't judge me. Anyways, because of that, Raikou is nearly uh, useless to him, which is really great because. One of the main issues I had with Zyrko was that it is faster than my entire team except my Hydreigon, so I don't know how I'll be able to get off chip damage on him. As I bring in Hydreigon, I'm going to go for the Dark Pulse. Honestly, Dark Pulsing was a really bad play on my part because he could have easily just brought in my champ and I would have been in a bad scenario, especially if it did decide to Dynamic Punch my incoming Chestnut. So I really should have just gone for the Draco Meteor, plus I still would have been able to knock out Porygon too. Uh, then again, even if I did go for Draco, that would have just given, given him a free switch back into my champ. It still put me in the same scenario. So, I guess it wasn't that big of a video. See, it, it, comes to, it, it comes to things like this when I'm narrating. I find that I kind of contradict myself and like, well, the same scenario plays out even if I would have made a different play. So yeah, I'm sure you guys may have caught that. <laughs> But I'm going to be able to knock out the Porygon 2, which is great because as I mentioned, once I get rid of Porygon 2, Scarf Dragon comes in, I click Draco and get a kill just about every time. So he does end up bringing the Mod Champ. I am locked into Dark Pulse, so I'm going to switch right into my Chestnut. And I found it very odd that he wasn't going for dynamic punches. The only thing I can think of is that he probably had close combat and not dynamic punch, which would make sense because I know some Assault Vest Mod Champs have run close combat. Although, I think Dynamic Punch is a lot better. But I'm going to Drain Punch as he tries to switch into his Crobat. I guess maybe thinking I would go for Lair Spikes. 
or go for Elite Seed as he can get a free switch into Superior. I really, really do not want to allow him to get up behind a substitute. So I'm going to stay in and I'm going to Drain Punch as I'm going to be able to take a Leaf Storm, then another Leaf Storm thanks to the Drain Punch recovery. And I'm going to be able to bring him down to the point where I can bring in Hydreigon, click Draco, and make sure that I knock out Superior or knock out something else on his team. So I ended up going for the spiky shield there just to stall out another Leaf Storm. But here I actually bring in my Starmie. Now the reason why I brought in Starmie as opposed to Hydreigon is because if he does decide to switch out, I guarantee that I knock out Swampert, Machamp, or Raikou because I am analytic. I'm Life Orb and everything has been fairly weakened at this point. If he stays in though, he can take my Psychic or Hydro Pump of course. So I basically put him in a scenario where he either has to take a huge hit from my Starmie with his superior or risk losing something else on his team. And he decides to just leave in superior as I do a pretty solid amount of damage. And he's going to be able to knock me out, giving me the chance to now bring in my Hydreigon and because I do have the U-turn, I'm going to be able to finish off superior. Which is really great because I'm in a solid situation right now where the odds are definitely in my favor to win this. As I bring in my Inferno, he's going to bring in Swampert. I did run a damage cap, and it turns out that the minimum damage that a close combat does to max defense and max HP Swampert is 40%. He's at 41%, so as long as I don't get absolute minimum damage, I should be able to knock out the Swampert. And thankfully, odds are in my favor as I'm able to finish him off. Well, that did 40%. He was at 41. See, this is why Showdown is confusing at times, but it's fine, it's fine. As I knock out Swampert, he's going to go ahead and bring in the Raikou. I can just safely switch right into my um, Mega Swampert because even if he did predict me to bring a Mega Swampert, that would that would have given me a free switch back into my Hydreigon to the point where I could have just clicked Draco and potentially to a KO the Machamp anyways after the minus two. So he does end up going for the safe Volt Switch and because he has choice specs, the battle is basically over at this point because I can set up a Rain Dance with Swampert, outspeed Raikou and outspeed Machamp and knock them out. And he knows the battle's over so he's going to end up running and that is going to be the victory in my favor. So yeah, that was definitely a fun, uh, good battle in my opinion. Uh, a little bit longer than I expected. The recording's about 12 minutes. I was hoping this would be a little short. But yeah, anyways, if you guys did enjoy, then make sure to leave a like, and I don't really have a question of the day, but yeah, I'm back, I'll be, have another video for you guys tomorrow, so uh, later everybody, thank you for watching.